Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد causes behind going back to sinfulness as we know that we are not perfect, we are not angels, human beings, they do sin, human beings, they do make mistakes. But Alhamdulillah, the door of repentance is open. The door to turn to Allah, turn to God Almighty is open. You can repent and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any time, at any moment. So our sinning or committing a sin should not be a justification for carrying on doing new sins, etc. The moment you sin, the moment you feel weak and you disobey Allah Azza wa Jal, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for sure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you. For sure, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to accept you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He descends every night in a manner suits His divine being. In a manner suits him, Azza wa Jal, glory be to him. And he asks Allah Azza wa Jal, every night, imagine your Lord every night, he descends and he asks his angels, Hal min ta'ibin fa'atub alayh? Is there anyone wants me to grant him forgiveness? Any seeker of repentance? Every night. So the door, my dear brothers and sisters, is open is open for any human being to turn to Allah, to his creator, and say, Oh my Lord, forgive me. And Allah will accept him. Your Lord will accept you. Because he is the one who created us. He is the one who knows us very well. So we are his make. So the moment you turn to him, he accepts you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ Allah is addressing me and addressing you, O oh, my servants who wronged themselves, who crossed the boundaries, asrafu ala anfusihim, who went to the extreme. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Never despair. Never lose hope. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا 
Allah forgives all types of sins, including the shirk itself, if you repent. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. So all the sins Allah forgives. Inna hu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Most certainly, he is the often forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, yes, we might sin. Yes, we might relapse. But that does not justify for us carrying on disobeying our creator and our sustainer. Sins, my dear brothers and sisters, are classified in Islam into two main categories. The two main categories, we call them kaba'ir and sagha'ir, major sins and minor sins. How can I differentiate or how to differentiate between major sins and minor sins? There is a criterion. Major sins, any sin that Allah Azza wa Jal, God Almighty, mentioned in his book, or through the, his Prophet وسلم, that whoever perpetrates this particular sin, for instance, will be cursed, Allah will be angry with him, then that is a major sin. That is a major sin. Any sin that has a prescribed punishment, prescribed punishment, then it is a major sin. What do we mean by prescribed punishment? It means that this sin has a known punishment according to the law, according to the Sharia. So if you perpetrate, of, if you commit this particular sin, then this is the punishment you are going to receive. So the punishment has been stated. So then this particular sin is major sin. Or if Allah Azza wa Jal threatens, for instance, Allah threatens those who deal in usury, riba, interest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has threatened and warned. And he said, whoever is involved in this, Allah is waging war. He is with war with Allah Azza wa Jal. That means now usury is major sin. Or for instance, if the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever does this, this is what will happen to him. Then it is a major sin. Like for instance, the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, Man ata arrafan aw kahinan fasaddaqahu bima yaqul faqad kafara bima unzila ala Muhammad. Whoever visits, whoever visits a fortune teller or psychic or palmist and he believes him, then he has disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because what was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Quran, the book of Allah. And in this Quran, it says that the knowledge of the unseen belongs exclusively, exclusively to Allah. So anyone claims that he knows the unseen, anyone claims that by reading your palm will tell you your future, Anyone who claims that the movement of this particular star, it means this is linked to your fate. If you go to such a person and you believe him, because that doesn't make any sense. What the movement of a celestial body in its orbit in the universe has to do with my fate, with my destiny. It has nothing to do with that. My destiny, the one who governs my destiny, is the one who brought me into being in the first place. My creator. So that's why my dear brothers in Islam and my dear viewers, Islam wants to liberate the human mind. To remove all these shackles of superstitions and myths. So you worship only your creator. So here Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says, if you go to this fortune teller and you believe him and what he said, then you have disbelieved in what was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Quran mentions otherwise, the opposite. And if you go to them, just for the sake, for instance, to say, well, I don't believe them, but uh, let me try. Listen to what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. 
He said, 40 days your prayers will not be accepted. We'll break and see you inshallah after the break. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if we agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died. The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers. We were talking about causes behind relapsing and causes behind going back to sinfulness. So going to fortune teller is a major sin. Or if, for instance, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah's curse be upon the women who imitate men and men who imitate women. That means if the, you imitate the opposite sex, Allah created you as a male. And you want now to act like a female. Allah created you a female. You want to act like a male. This is not right. This will create disorder. Man is a man, a woman is a woman. Allah created everyone for a particular role, an important role in life to play. The man cannot take the role of the woman. Men cannot get pregnant, can they? Absolutely not. So, so no one, the man cannot take the place of the woman. Because a woman... Allah Azza wa Jal, her creator, has given her certain talents the man don't have. The talent of patience, etc., for bringing up the children. But the woman also cannot play the role of the man. Because Allah made the man the bread gainer. He's the one who should sweat, he's the one who should toil, he's the one who should work hard. A woman cannot do that. And if she wants to go and start taking the role of the man, it will be a mess. Total mess. So everything should be in order. A woman is a woman. There are certain roles that the man cannot play that role and also. So here the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Allah's curse. So this is a major sin. Allah's curse be upon those men who imitate women. They are imitating women. They want to look like women. Feminish. And also the opposite. Allah's curse upon the women who also want to behave like men. And also that's what... He وسلم, said, you should not dress like women, and women should not dress like men. So this is a major sin. Minor sins. So now we have major sins and minor sins. The minor sin, there is no prescribed punishment. There is no known punishment for that. This is why we call it minor. So any sin that is not major is called minor. But we have to bear in mind one thing. The ulama, the Muslim scholars, have a famous saying. لا كبيرة مع إصرار ولا صغيرة مع استغفار. The meaning: No sin will be a major sin as long as you seek forgiveness. As long as you ask Allah forgiveness and make istighfar, Allah will forgive it. So it's not major. Major in the sense that will not be forgiven. So always keep repenting and turning to Allah Azza wa Jal. ولا صغيرة minor sin. No sin will be considered minor and small if you persist, if you insist to carry on doing it. Because you have to take into consideration whom are you sinning against? Whom are you disobeying? You are disobeying your creator, the one who brought you into being. Now, why this topic, my dear brothers and sisters? Why? Why we have to talk about the relapsing 
and going back into sinfulness. Because, first of all, if you are leading righteous, pious life, this is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. So you have to be grateful and you need to manifest and exhibit your gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have to keep crying to your Lord, Oh Allah, keep me steadfast. Keep me on this upright way. I don't want to go back. Because my dear brothers and sisters, the moment you start obeying Allah Azza wa Jal, you start to feel the sweetness, the delightfulness inside you. Iman has sweetness inside, delightfulness inside. So you don't want to go and taste the bitterness again. So that's why we need to remind each other and warn each other that we should not go and fall into sinfulness and relapse. That's why we are addressing this issue. The second point, many of us, they feel secure from going back and falling into sinfulness. Sometimes they become arrogant. Arrogant in the sense, Alhamdulillah, he thinks that he is pious, he thinks he is righteous. So, he doesn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah azza wa jal to keep him steadfast. So he thinks that he will never disobey Allah, he thinks he will never sin again. No. Every one of us needs to be reminded. Because at any time, you might disobey Allah azza wa jal, you might feel weak, etc. Now, causes of relapsing. Many people, that's the main theme. Many people, after, mashallah, leading an upright life, righteous life, after a few, many years, they relapse. They go back to square one. Is there any reason for that? What are the causes behind that? There must be causes. There must be reasons. So we are going just to mention a few of them. First one is the arrogance itself. The self-conceit. The self-esteem. Say, so, mashallah, alhamdulillah. And you look upon the people. No, no, no. If you see a sinner, if you see a person disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, thank Allah Azza wa Jal that you are not disobeying him, but also pray for that particular person. Say, oh Allah, guide him. Oh Allah, save him. Don't look upon him. Don't belittle him. So you should not have this arrogance inside you. You have to be very humble and cry to Allah all the time. That's why one of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Ya muqallib al-qulubi thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Sarrif qalbi ala ta'afik. So the meaning, O oh Allah, you who turns the hearts, the hearts they keep flipping, the hearts they keep changing. Today you love this person, tomorrow you hate him. Today you hate him, tomorrow you love him. What happened? Moody. So your feelings, they keep changing. So who changes the hearts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why in the one of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا The Prophet sallallahu talks in one of the hadith about what the trials and the tribulations, the afflictions that they are going to happen in the past. I say, perhaps a person will go to sleep while he's a believer. He believes. Gets up in the morning in a state of disbelief. In the morning he is a disbeliever. In the evening he is a believer. So nothing is constant. Everything is changing. So that's why you need to be humble. And always pray to Allah to keep you steadfast. So if you are arrogant, then this is for sure. One reason that you might relapse and it is a reality. It is a reality. The moment you start looking upon the people, belittling the people, you end up doing something like them or worse than what they are doing. The second thing is the lack of ikhlas. Deficiency in the sincerity in the heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers and sisters, He looks into our hearts. Inna Allah 
لا ينظر إلى صوركم ولا إلى أيسامكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم See what the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying Verily Allah does not look into your complexion into your forms and shapes and physique No He looks into your hearts What is there in that heart? Where is the the sincerity in the heart? Where is the humility? Where is the humbleness? That's what he looks. And also he looks into your actions, your deeds. So we have to work in the ikhlas. We have to work on the sincerity. And we do things purely, exclusively for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if there is lack and deficiency in this sincerity, ikhlas in the heart, then the ultimate result is relapse, going back to sinfulness. Another cause, lack of dhikr. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, a human being consists of two things, body and soul. Body plus soul equal a human being. This body needs food, the material food. The soul as well needs food, but it is spiritual. So if we neglect and ignore the soul, what will happen? You start to feel something inside you, holiness, vacuum, spiritual vacuum inside you. You are well off. Everything you have, cars, nice house, beautiful wife, mashallah, everything you have. But still, you are unhappy. Because you feel something inside you, uh, there is a vacuum. And you then you try to fill this vacuum by what? Drugs, alcohol, women, which makes your life miserable, more miserable. Until you reach a stage where you cannot take it anymore, then you decide to end this life. Why? Because you as a human being, you have two things, you have to take care of them. How to take care of the soul is the dhikr, the istighfar, the remembrance of Allah. Always keep, my dear brother and sister, keep your tongue busy with the dhikr. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Kalimatan, khafifatan ala lisan, thaqilatan fil mizan, Subhanallah wa bihamdah, Subhanallah al-Azim. This beautiful dua, Subhanallah wa bihamdah, Subhanallah al-Azim. Two words, light on the tongue. Heavy on the scale, on the mizan. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, al -azim. So always keep this. So this will give life to your heart. Always keep your tongue busy. Because this tongue will not remain static. It will move. Either you keep it, you use it, and keep moving this tongue in praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or... If you don't do that, this tongue will be doing something else. You will be singing, you will be backbiting, you will be slandering, because the tongue will not remain static. It will carry on moving. So keep your tongue busy. لا يسال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله. Keep your tongue wet because of the dhikr. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, astaghfirullah. Whether you are walking, whether you are in the office, whether you are doing your, whatever. But your tongue is busy with the dhikr. So that will keep your heart alive. That is the fuel for this complicated machinery. And this is the heart. So that is the cause. So the cause, third cause, is the lack of dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Verily, in the remembrance of, the, of Allah, the hearts, they find peace. You will never find peace, my dear brother and sister, except in the remembrance, in the dhikr. Then you'll find that peace inside you. No dhikr, this heart will be dead. Also, among the things, the causes behind the relapsing, missing your prayers. You miss your prayers. 
And this is something needs to be elaborated on. Insha'Allah, we will continue in the next episode. of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, pay to the laborer his wages before his sweat becomes dry. Sunan Ibn Majah, Volume 3, Book of Mortgages, Chapter 4, Hadith Number 2443. against humanity as a whole. Iconic, inspiring, encouraging. Don't judge Islam based on the followers. Farik Naik. Judge Islam based on the authentic sources. That's the glorious Quran and the authentic, 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 authentic. Son of the world famous orator on Islam and comparative religion, Dr. Zakir Naik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to do a proper job and to earn a proper reward. A star above par in Teens Star every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.